Hi, this is another pop culture roadshow thing where I look at some of the things that I've bought or have or uh, collectibles, all that crap behind me, and uh, just learn something about them, try to find out a little bit of the history of the weird things that I've picked up. The first one, I have this set of Superman color forms from 1964. So these are really, they're actually super cool. It's in great condition. Everything's in primary colors. The villain's really cool. Like, how do I show this? It, it almost looks like something out of an indie comic, but this is from 1964. And also it has detachable arms and legs, so you can pose it in different things. A lot of the color forms, they would have characters in different poses, and you could use those and paste them around. And then it's got, in the background, a painting of Metropolis. And then it also comes with the original instructions, which, again, it has uh, a kind of a indie comic sort of feel to it. I don't know. It reminds me of something from like the 90s when you used to get comics. So the person who invented color forms, they invented it. It was a uh, kind of a husband and wife team from, they invented them in 1951. Harry and Patricia Kislevitz. They were art students and the husband was deployed. Uh, he was away in the army or something like that and didn't have either the money or the actual access to oil paints. So he was an artist and wanted to do some painting but they had all of this rubber vinyl stuff. So he tried cutting out shapes so he could make, just just make something. He could do shapes or whatever and make, make artwork out of them to pass the time. Turned out he discovered that they would stick to anything that was like glass or tile, like anything with a smooth surface. What they did originally was when he came home, uh, she, uh, his wife had a bathroom that was all painted with this enamel paint and they would cut out shapes and do like little artwork things all over the walls. And then people would go use the bathroom and they discovered it and the word, word got out and they ended up selling them as ways for kids to make art. And they were one of the first toy companies to advertise on the Captain Kangaroo show in, I want to say 1954, I think it was, which is a pretty quick way to be that popular and come up from like 1951 when they first invented it. Later on, they sold this, uh, sold the business to Toy Biz, which then was owned by Marvel. Ironically, I'm holding a Superman one here, and they continued to do it. They still make the original version. The original version of the color forms was actually just shapes. It was triangles and squares and all that, and that's what you would create stuff out of. Um, but the guy still he thought it was fun. It made them money, but he was still an artist at heart, and he gave the kid when, once his kids grew up. He gave them the company. An E.T. TV tray from 1982. One thing I will say about E.T., I do remember that when home video was all the rage and I had seen E.T., I always wondered when was it going to come out on home video? When was it going to come out on home video? And the whole thing was, is they had so much marketing tied into sponsorships from like Reese's and all that kind of crap um, that made it so selling the rights or the distribution rights for home viewing of the movie, uh, it was very difficult. So E.T. actually didn't come out in home video for like, I want to say 10 years, but that, that, don't quote me on that. Anyway, what I really wanted to know was who invented the TV tray? Nobody knows. Nobody knows who, or at least there's no documentation of who actually invented the TV tray. I like how I'm doing this. Like it's one of those floating things on a DVD screen, screensaver. Anyway, um, nobody knows who invented the, the TV tray at all that I can find. But what they did know is uh, there's a chicken and the egg sort of thing where people go, the TV tray was invented because of the TV dinner. No, it's the other way around. The TV tray came first because of the invention of TV. They wanted to keep people sitting in front of it so they would eat normal dinners. Jerry Thomas invented the TV dinner. So the TV dinner came afterwards, and he did it because, I don't know. <laughs> so I looked all that up, and I didn't look up why he invented the TV dinner. E.T. TV tray. You remember the whole like read along books, read along records, and then later on read along cassettes? I looked up who did the very first read along book, and it was actually Disney. Disney started the entire read along book thing. 
they started the whole thing back in 1965. That was when the first read-along book happened. And I got this one here, Snow White from 1966, the Treasure Island store on it, the price tag for it. Treasure Island later on became, I want to say CBS, but I'm probably absolutely wrong. But they were all narrated by the same person, Robbie Lester, uh, for many, many years. And that sound, the turn the page sound that everybody knows, like the turn the page, bling, that is Tinkerbell. The whole thing was that they said when you hear Tinkerbell's noise, sound, I guess I don't know the exact wording of it, but that's what it is. That's the famous sound that they used on everything. And that makes more sense when you, hear, when you think about the fact that Disney invented these. They did both records and cassettes. And then what they did is Disney started licensing the uh, Golden Books stories and started putting those out as well before they, I think they actually still make them, but now lots of people make them, but that's where the whole concept came from, was from Disney. This one seems neat. It's actually not. So in the 70s, fondue was a thing. People would melt cheese, have a big festering pot of cheese in the middle of a room and dip all kinds of stuff in it, like fruit or cheese, more cheese. Kids are like, I want to be like mom and dad. So they made a kitty fondue set, delicious candy coated treats. You should never take a picture of somebody with their mouth mid, you know, wide open while they're eating. Let's see, it was made by Kenner. It's, <laughs> so it seems dangerous. You're like, oh my God, a fondue set for kids? Don't get too excited. It is pretty much just a vessel. You got these packets of dried, I don't know, chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Then you would take boiling water, pour it into here, and then pour in the packets, and it would turn, it, you would do hot water because it's fondue, but it, you didn't have to. And basically, it would just become a syrup. And that's all it was. It was just, so you could still use it, even though the packets aren't there, get some chocolate syrup, pour it in there, warm it up before you put it in or something, strawberry and you can still do the whole fondue set. That's all it is. There's nothing dangerous about it whatsoever. As a handle, for some reason, you open it up and then it comes with a little bunch of sticks so you and your friends can come and dip uh, in the picture on the box they used marshmallows. So that was it. Remember when they used to have shaving? Well, maybe you don't know, I don't know. But they used to have like, you could pretend to shave and you'd have fake razors and stuff. Why did we always want to do stuff like that? Like, oh, my parents do that. And then you realize that like, growing up, you have like to get a job and stuff. You don't get to play like a kid anymore. That sounded better. That is the fondue set by Kenner. No, it's the by men thing. Those are the things that I found out about today. Hopefully, you found it interesting. Uh, if not, I don't know. I I enjoyed it. So, thank you very much. Talk to you later. So long.